Namaste and uh, hello from uh, Dublin in Ireland. My name is Ken McGreevy. I, uh, I live and work in Dublin in Ireland and I'm delighted and honoured to be asked to talk about, just briefly talk about my travels uh, all around the world over the last 10 or 11 years and just to, for the next 10 or 15 minutes just give you a little bit of an insight into what I have done and um, you know to show how how easy it is to do it and to try and deal with uh, all of the fears and trepidations or some of the fears and trepidations in the short while that we have. I, I live and work in Dublin and Ireland and as you can see it's on the most westerly part of Europe and it's actually the nicest part of Europe so regardless what people tell you Ireland is the place to be. Ireland is the place to be, particularly in lockdown. We've had some fantastic weather here for the last couple of months and it's a fantastic place to be. So I'm delighted to be home. Uh, I was due to be in Colombia uh, around this time of the year. I have a motorcycle there and I was due to, to bring that further on down, but like, like everybody, COVID has dictated where and when and what we're going to be doing, you know? Uh, about 10 or 12 years ago, um, I decided to embark on this adventure motorcycle travel thing and um, you know my, my, my route to it is fairly typical. Uh, I'm married, I have kids, they're in their 20s now thankfully um, but when they, when they were young I always had a huge desire to travel and to uh, see different parts of the world and that was massively influenced by uh, the great uh, TV series Mondo Enduro. If you haven't seen it check it out, I think it's on Netflix. Um, and of course, Long Way Around, The Blessed Charlie and, uh, and Ewan, and their travels around the world, albeit as, as, as a pair, with a huge, with a huge uh, support team. Uh, I didn't have that. So, uh, so it was a case of where when, when finances allowed and when circumstances allowed, uh, I decided, right, this is for me. Um, but of course, uh, I didn't really have the money to go off and buy a fantastic, huge, big um, BMW or whatever. So the adventure bike does not have to be a big, huge BMW. It does not have to be uh, a 10,000 euro bike or a $10,000 bike that you spend another $5,000 adventurizing. Um, I picked for me what was the, what was, I believed, uh, my ideal perfect uh, adventure bike and of course that adventure bike uh, is the well-known uh, adventure bike in adventure circles it is the ex-irish police uh, kawasaki gt550 ideal bike for me it cost about 400 euros which is in and around the average industrial wage the weekly wage here in ireland so i set about uh, adventurizing it and i put on ammo boxes well a friend of mine put on ammo boxes and i gave him a hand so i effectively put on the ammo boxes and um, I then tried to get my com I was a little bit weak in confidence would you believe it and I started off with small trips around Ireland and then a trip to Scotland and extended it and extended it you know I obviously come back every time and uh, you know you kind of deal with your it's you're more dealing with yourself a lot of the time and your own fears but when you get into it for me it is probably at the moment uh, for me, it's not for everybody now, but for me, it's one of the best ways to travel. And it's, um, you know, we're talking about cocooning now in these COVID days. When you travel with a group of guys, um, you know, you're, you're in a bit of a cocoon. You know, when you travel with your friends, you're in a little bit of a cocoon. But when you travel on your own, you have to get outside your comfort zone. You have to get into company and you have to, um, you have to talk to people. And that's what does it for me. I'm, I'm, my job in Ireland is a police officer and I'm in the people business. So I really do enjoy talking to people and I believe that everybody has something to say and some story to tell you. Uh, so that's really what does it for me. And that always has kind of motivated, motivated me more than scenery. While I enjoy a good volcano or a good waterfall or a good mountain vista, um, that's, that's what I enjoy doing is, meet, is meeting uh, people and, and listening to their experiences. And of course, I enjoy the, the route to get there, but uh, it's mainly for me, for mainly for me, it's the people and the interaction with, with the people. Um, so over, over the last, I suppose, 11, 10, 11 years, um, I've brought the bike uh, all over uh, Western Europe and into Eastern Europe. And what I would do, I would take my annual holidays, which can stretch uh, up to maybe six weeks uh, at times, and um, 
I would deposit the bike in a particular location, unknowns to myself at the time where that would be really at the end of the journey. And then I would um, fly back home and go back the following year and move it on further on down the road. And I left the bike everywhere. I've been all over France and Spain, Bulgaria, Romania. I've left it in Romania a couple of times, Bulgaria as well. Um, also Armenia, um, down to Crete, down to the Greek islands there in Crete, I left it there once. And um, uh, I've, I ended up had a bad accident actually in Kazakhstan. Uh, I was due to give a talk. Would you believe, I, I can still can't believe this, at a United Nations uh, conference on tourism, I, I was asked to give a talk there um, in uh, Almaty in Kazakhstan. Unfortunately, I had a, quite a bad accident. Uh, I wasn't personally injured. The bike was, uh, the bike is a little bit damaged. So uh, uh, the bike is still in Kazakhstan. Then my travels uh, slightly changed. I got an invitation to go on a 4x4 trip um, from Kyrgyzstan over there, Kyrgyzstan down into Afghanistan. Uh, with, a, with a good friend of mine and uh, Gary O'Keefe and we went down there uh, on a 4x4 trip and that was fantastic and again just off the scale uh, experience in relation to meeting people and um, just the different way of life and you know I always thank myself for being so lucky to be able to do this when you travel to places in the world that are are, uh, are not developed countries that we, as we would know them in Eastern Euro or in Western Europe um, you really have to pinch yourself and say, am I actually doing this? You know, so when you have the health, and it doesn't cost a huge amount of money, it might, it's, not as, it's not as big as, as you might think, it's really time is the issue. Um, obviously visas can be a big problem in some countries. Um, but for me, uh, I make the time and I try and save the, the, few, the few euros to pursue my passion. And that's, that's what, I, what, I, what I like to do. Um, Again, when you travel on your own, you deal with all kinds of issues about feeling lonely and um, missing your friends and your family at home. And uh, you get a little bit of paranoia about what will happen if the bike breaks down, what will happen if I have bad interactions with police or customs. I have had all of those um, situations and I, I deal with them, you know, I'm, I'm, at, and I'm at a stage now where I actually kind of welcome sometimes these kind of encounters and in a funny way, the odd, the occasional breakdown, it brings about a confidence that everything is solvable and there is nowhere in the world that you will not meet good people. Uh, there are good people, there are more good people out there guys, as we all know, than bad people and people are inclined to, people are inclined to focus on the badness. Um, whereas. I know there's, there's, there's good all over the place and people all over the world are doing the same thing. Everybody is just looking to get a roof, keep a roof over their heads, get food for themselves and their family, look after their children, have a job, have good health, all of that kind of stuff. And of course there are plenty of people who are on the margins of society who sometimes maybe try and take advantage, but I haven't met them. I have seen them, but I haven't met them. And I, I suppose my radar is, is kind of up for all of that kind of stuff. Um, I like to stay uh, predominantly in youth hostels or in homestays. I think the atmosphere is much nicer in locations like that. Um, people are more predisposed to talking and interacting. Now, if, if people are not your thing, you know, there's no, there's no um, pressure on you to interact. But as I say, I love to hear people's stories from different countries. And you, you might only be staying in a hostel for one night or two nights, but the, the um, the interaction with people can be very intense and you can make lifelong friendships and I, and I have, I'm still in contact through Facebook uh, with people that I would have met um, 10 years ago in youth hostels all over the world. Um, so it's, for me it's a very, it's a special place. Now occasionally, occasionally I do find myself in some um, very, very expensive hotels. Uh, you'll have to go onto my Facebook page to see how I actually do that. Um, and I enjoy, I enjoy doing that kind of thing as well. And every now and again, if you're on a long trip, it is nice to kind of stay in a nice hotel and have nice sheets and have a nice shower and, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, uh, just, to, just to enjoy the ambience of it, if you can afford it. But there is a way, there's a ways, ways around that. And they are legal, I think. And they are legal, I think. Um, there's, a, there's another kind of issue that I find people have, uh, are, have always asked me about is how do you deal with police? You know, a lot of countries that I travel to, let's say in Eastern Europe or in Central America or in South America, uh, police corruption is an unfortunate uh, fact of life. And I haven't paid a bribe yet. I have no intention of paying a bribe. 
um, what I like to do is before a cop opens his mouth, big smile on your face, handshake out, how you doing, how you keeping. It's very hard to be nasty uh, to somebody who's being nice to you. And you know, a few token compliments, and if it's only talking about the, the, the uniform, the, or the, that's a fantastic police car, oh my gosh, I wish we had those in our country. It's just to, to put the cop on the back foot as opposed to when the interaction starts, it can be problematic to try and force the climb down then, you know, if you know what I mean? Um, and that confidence comes around because, you know, cops need hugging too, you know, cops need hugging as well. They're ordinary guys and women. And, um, you know, I've had fantastic uh, fun where I've gone off for a few beers afterwards with, with different cops who have stopped me and they brought me to campsites and I've stayed in their homes and all of that kind of stuff. Um, what else now do I want to tell you about? Um, people will, will ask me sometimes, where do you leave the bike? How do you manage to know where to leave the bike? It's very simple. A lot of the times, sometimes I do know I might have a contact. There was one time in Romania, a friend of mine here in Ireland, and uh, he's a Romanian guy, and I just said to him, "Do you would you know of anywhere in Romania where I can leave my uh, my motorcycle?" And he says, "Yes, you can leave in my in my family home." It's as simple as that. You know, you make the contacts. Great, uh, there's great websites out there. Uh, Horizons Unlimited, ADV Rider, big biking commune in India. You guys. Uh, I'm sure have plenty of contacts and I will be relying on those contacts when I get to India. Um, and it's amazing, people are very benevolent. No more than if, if, uh, if you were sitting in a cafe and a biker rocks up and engages with you um, and he says to you, would you know anywhere, maybe I can leave my bike for a year, six months, whatever it is. It might be a bit surprising, but you will say, well, uh, certainly I'll, I'll see what I can do. You know, and I can guarantee you, if you have the confidence to do it, um, that person mightn't know, but he may know a person who knows a person who knows a person who has a shed, that kind of stuff. And yeah, okay, you're taking you're taking a bit of a chance, but by and large, people are fairly people are fairly good, and I haven't had an issue with that yet. Uh, like my bike is currently in Pasto, in in Colombia, down there with a lovely man, Freddie, who who I had never previously met, but another friend of mine had met him and just had said it to him in passing. He only had a cup of coffee with him at the border. And he said it to him and um, my good friend Declan McAvoy, who was also on Big Bike in Commune actually, um, he, he suggested I contact this guy and Freddie has been fantastic and it's, he's looking after my bike. So like people are very, very good and you have to kind of get out of the comfort zone. Yeah, you have to take a bit of a chance, but um, I think you'll, you'll be rewarded for it. And you'd be very, very unlucky if you met, if you met somebody um, that was going to take advantage of you. Uh, over the last couple of years, what I've what I've focused on, really, is uh, I've actually brought that to another level. When I say I, I, I like to interact with people, um, what I do is I, I, I've actually started to put them on film, put them on on my record them on my phone, just attach a microphone if they're keen to uh, if they're keen to talk to me, and just simple people from from a guy selling street food in uh, in Nicaragua to a kid working in a youth hostel uh, with a good story to, you know, just different guys and uh, different people that to me are interesting. They might be interesting to you and you might say after looking at Ken, what did you find interesting? But no, these, these were, at the time I, I, found, I found them and I still look back on them. They're interesting people to, um, to have shared some time with and I'm very thankful that they allowed me into their, into their little world and uh, to allowed me to, to, uh, to get their stories. And I look forward to doing that. I'd love to take that to another level. Um, I don't know if that's possible. So um, that's just a very brief thing. If you want to go on to my Facebook page, um, you'll find me Ken McGreevy. I'm the beardy guy. I think there's only one or two of me on Facebook. Uh, so go on, you, the, the page will be open there for the next uh, week or two if you want to get on and friend me. And you're more than welcome to, um, to tic tac with me on Messenger ask me any questions you want in relation to travel and adventure travel and motorcycle travel and traveling on your own and all of that kind of stuff. And I'm, you know, on my bucket list, yes, there it is there guys, I wanna to go to India. I wanna to go to India and I'm looking forward to getting there. I've heard so much about it. I've been watching different blogs and uh, guys doing different YouTube channels and I like the culture and I like the color and the diversity and of course the people. That's what it's all about. And I love the people. Um, so. Hopefully I will get there soon. Hopefully I'll get there soon, I don't know when. But I hope I'll get there soon. And I really look forward to it. And I hope maybe through Big Biking Commune, you'll be able to look after me, 
you know? Um, and bring me to places and bring me to faces that nobody else gets to see. And uh, so, of course, in the COVID times, you know, like these bloody restrictions, as I say, I'm, I'm a cop in Ireland here, so unfortunately I'm part of that regime that has to try and enforce these things. Um, a lot of them may, may seem nonsensical, but you know, they're there for our good. And in Ireland, we've, we've done reasonably okay. We've done way beyond the expectations uh, in relation to uh, the prevention of deaths as a result of observing the restrictions. So I would encourage you to observe whatever restrictions are in place in your country. And um, they will be lifted in time and we will all get back to some bit of normality. And maybe this is a reminder of just how fickle life can be and that, you know, it's not till something is taken away that you realize how valuable it is. Like that right to travel is fantastic. Um, so when the restrictions are lifted, get back on your bikes, guys and girls. Get back on your bikes and follow your dreams. Follow your dreams. And, you know, Obviously, everybody has their own restrictions, their domestic scenario, their finances, their job, their relationships, and all that kind of things. But if a travel is what you want to do, it's very, very easy to make it happen. All you need to do is to take that one step, take that one kilometer on your motorcycle, just make it happen. But don't overthink it, because the famous saying in the adventure biking community is that you will develop, ultimately, paralysis from over-analysis. So I know I probably speak too fast and you have to slow down the subtitles, but that's what it, that's, if it's one thing I will leave you is try not to develop paralysis from over analysis. Um, and you'll see there from some of the slides that I've shown, um, you don't need a big bike. You don't need an expensive bike. There's guys going around the world on Honda C90s. Um, so don't, don't fall into the marketing scam of having to have a big, huge 1200cc, 1300cc bike. You don't. Uh, I started off on a 550cc bike, and in actual fact, uh, I'd probably be looking at going a bit lower again for the next trip. Um, my current bike in, in, um, in uh, South America is a very old uh, Honda Africa Twin. Fantastic bike. It's a big, heavy lump of a thing, but it's a lovely bike to ride uh, on a little bit of trail and whatnot. So, time is against me now. Uh, unfortunately, I have to go. Um, and it was a pleasure and an honor to be asked to give this little bit of an interview. And I look forward to, um, to seeing you all again. Namaste and permalinge to all my friends in the Big Biking Commune in India. And thank you again. I look forward to, to seeing you all, all soon.